Romans chapter 8, verse 28. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are called according to his purpose. For whom he did foreknow, he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his Son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. So, for whom he did know who God, he also did predestinate. He has a plan for our lives. He knows the hair on our head to be conformed to the image of his son through the faith of Jesus Christ. So we're, it's kind of like, you know, if you become, if you're a Christian, you kind of put to death who you want to be and who you thought you were going to be to be like Jesus and to live a life like Jesus lived. I'm trying to conform my life to live a life like Jesus lived, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Moreover, whom he did predestinate, them he also called, and whom he called them he also justified, and whom he justified, them he also glorified. Back up, it's kind of reiterating what verse Romans 8.28 says. All things work together for good to them that love God, to them that are called, to them that are justified. He glorifies. God lifts up those that sacrificed their own lives were dead in Christ. The old man is put to death and we become a new man in Christ. What shall we then say to these things? To what things? To discouragement, to doubt, to fear, to anxiety, to worry, to frustration. What shall we then say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? Nobody. I have the power and authority to rebuke all of that. It's Monday, Motivation Monday. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. What things are you saying something to? Whatever things are in your life that are not allowing you to serve God, that are not helping you to serve God and to do the work of the Master, Jesus, our Lord and Savior, what things are stopping you from doing the work of the Lord? What shall we then say to these things? Think about it. Get a pen and paper out. Write them down for yourself. What things are stopping you from doing the work of God? What things are stopping you from giving joy and being thankful and peaceful? What shall we then say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? Rebuke it in the name of Jesus. I'm a child of God. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. He that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not with him also freely give us all Things. I'm going to go to Matthew chapter 6 real quick. It's verse 19. Lay not up for yourselves treasures upon earth, where moth and rust doth corrupt, and where thieves break through and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust doth corrupt, and where thieves do not break through nor steal. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. Matthew Chapter 6, verse 25. Therefore I say unto you, take no thought for your life. Don't worry about your life. Your life is God's. We're living sacrifices for God to do the work of our Lord and Savior, Jesus. Therefore, take no thought for your life. What ye shall eat, what ye shall drink, nor yet for your body, what ye shall put on. Don't, don't, don't worry about your body. It doesn't matter how you look. You know, what's your heart? Is your heart right with God? Are you seeking him first? Are you giving him thanks in all things? Don't worry. It, it, it doesn't matter how you look. What you shall put on is not life more than meat and the body more than raiment. Is not life more than what you eat and what you wear. Amen. It definitely is. There's a whole spiritual soul that we have and we're created in the image of God this is just, it's kind of like a loaner car, you know, our real car is in the shop, man, getting fixed, you know, and we're going to get it back and we're going to be glad when we get it back because, because this thing's smoking and, you know, the wheels are shaking when I'm driving and <laughs> it's falling apart. I don't know if it's going to make it. It's just a loaner. It ain't going to make it. It's going to break down. I hope they get it back quicker than, than later, you know, <laughs> behold the fowls of the air for they sow not, neither do they reap nor gather into barns, yet your heavenly Father feedeth them. Are ye not much better than they? Which of you, by taking thought, can add one cubit to his stature? What good does trying to plan have to do? What, what, what good does it do other than take your focus 
from right now and whatever is important around you, from loving your partner, from taking care of your children, from looking for people you can minister to and help and lift up and encourage. Verse 28, Matthew chapter 6, And why take ye thought for raiment? What you wear. Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They toil not. They don't have to work to grow. They just grow by doing what God designed them to do. We're the same way, folks. Neither do they spin. And yet, they just sit in there soaking up God, soaking up that sunshine. The word says God is love. God is light. God is a spirit. And, <laughs> oh, man. And, and, <laughs> Oh, I'm, I'm tongue-tied. There's this girl, and it just popped up on my phone. And um, anyways, it's her. it popped up a message, and it, 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 it flabbergasted me. And yet I say unto you that even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Wherefore, if God so clothed the grass of the field, which today is and tomorrow is cast into the oven, shall he not much more clothe you, O ye? Of little faith. Therefore take no thought, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or wherewithal shall we be clothed? For after all these things do the Gentiles seek. Now listen to this. Wherefore, if God, if God loves the, the birds and the animals, and he takes care of everything else in the world, takes care of uh, everything else in, in, in creation is taken care of without worrying, without working, without sowing and reaping and, and trying to figure out how it's going to do everything. It just does it. If God takes care of all that, shall he not much more clothe us? O ye of little faith, have faith in God, the creator, the maker of all things. Take no thought saying, what shall we eat? Or what shall we drink? What are we going to do? What are we going to do if this happens? What are we going to do if we can't find it? Trust God. Everything's going to be okay. Fear is not of the Lord, but a spirit of peace and love and joy and a strong mind. Wherewithal shall we be clothed? What are we going to wear? How are we going to buy stuff? I Don't worry. Have faith in God, O ye of little faith. For after all these things do the Gentiles seek. These are the things that all... Those without God seek. These are all the things the people of the world seek. This is all the things that they pump into your mind and feed you through your phone and, you know, the internet and the TV and the commercials. Worry, worry, fear, fear. You know, what are you going to do? What are you going to buy? How are, how are you going to make it happen? I don't have to worry about it because I'm a child of God and he tells me not to worry. He says, O ye of little faith, therefore take no thought saying, What shall we eat or what shall we drink or wherewithal shall we be clothed? Matthew chapter 6, verse 32. For after all these things do the Gentiles seek. This is what the world does. The world worries about what they're going to wear. The world worries about what they're going to eat. The world worries about what they're going to do. You know, what are, what are we going to do? We're children of God. We don't have to worry. We can rest it with faith. Faith, hope, and charity. Faith in God and His Word and that He loves us and that He created everything and He has purpose and reason for our lives already and that if we surrender our own wills to do the work of the Lord, how much He's going to bless us and lift us up. Don't be like the Gentiles. Don't be like the non-believers. Don't buy into their lies and their fear and their deceit. For your Heavenly Father knoweth, verse 32, chapter 6, that ye have need of all these things things. God's not saying you don't need them. God's not saying do without. He's saying don't worry about it, O ye of little faith. This is what the Gentiles do. Your heavenly Father, our Father, God, knoweth that ye right here have need of all these things. God knows that you need it. But seek ye first the kingdom of of God and his righteousness. God's not telling you to not wear clothes. God's not telling you to not eat healthy food. God's not telling you to not have nice things. God's saying don't worry about it. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Glory, hallelujah, man. Praise God. Seek him first in all that you do. Put God first and he will lift you up to where you need to be. God 
knows everything you need. He created you. You're his child. He loves you. This is a matter of what do you put first? But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Seek ye first the kingdom of God, and you'll have all that you need. Seek ye first the kingdom of God, and don't worry about how it's going to happen, but have faith and trust in God Almighty that he loves you, and he's going to bless you, because you put him first. And if you put him first, he's going to I'm not going to say he's going to put you first. He don't have to put people first. He just, you're either with him or not with him, you know, but if you put him first in our lives, in your life, he's going to put you there in the group that has all that they need, that doesn't have to worry. Let go of it. Let go and let God believe in the things not seen and don't be like the Gentiles seeking what they're going to wear, what they're going to eat, where they're going to stay, how they're going to gather, how they're going to heap treasures on earth which the word of God tells us specifically not to do. Your heavenly father knoweth that ye have need of all these things, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added unto you. Take therefore no thought for the morrow. Don't worry about tomorrow. Don't, don't waste time stealing from today to worry about tomorrow, which might not even come. For the morrow, tomorrow, shall take thought for the things of itself. Tomorrow, there are going to be enough problems with tomorrow without worrying about tomorrow today. And there's enough things to focus about today to take care of today and worry about today without worrying about tomorrow. Sufficient unto the day is the de evil thereof. There's plenty of things right now to be doing, to be worrying about, to be focused on without worrying about that. And, and we ain't even talking about the past. Let it go. Let it go. That's in the past. Remember old Lion King, Akuna Matata? He said, pop, right on the head. And he said, ow, what'd you do that for? It doesn't matter. It's in the past. We're here today, now, with God Almighty. And he loves us. And he's telling us, don't worry, like the world does, like the Gentiles do, like those without God, but seek ye first. He's not saying don't have nice things. Don't eat good food. He's not saying any of that. But he's saying, get your priorities right with God. Seek God first and everything else will fall into line. That's the word of God. That's gospel. Praise the Lord. All right, we're going to flip back over to Romans chapter 8, verse 31. Amen, amen, praise God. What shall we say then to these things? What did I say? What things? What shall we then say to what things? To all the things keeping you from seeking God first. To all the things keeping you down. To all the things making you worry. Rebuke them in the name of Jesus, because what shall we then say to these things? Romans chapter 8, verse 31. If God be for us, who can be against us? No one. No weapon formed against us shall prosper. We can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. He that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all. How shall he not with him also freely give us all things? Freely. Freely give us all things. He gave his one and only son, his only begotten son. He sent to that cross to die for us so that we could be free, so that we could have eternal life with the father as a token of his faith in us and how much he loves us to show us that he loves us, that he is the one and only God, that I rebuke you, devil, in the name of Jesus. Just keep it on moving. Don't even worry. Don't even think about it, folks. Let it go. Let God. Romans chapter 8, verse 33. Who shall lay anything to the charge of God's elect? If it is God that justifieth, who is he that condemneth? It is Christ that died, yea, rather, that is risen again. Who is even at the right hand of God? Jesus is at the right hand of God. And what did it say up there on verse 29? For whom he did foreknow, he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his son. We're to follow the life of Jesus, who is at the right hand of God. Who also maketh intercession for us. Jesus is praying for us, man. All the people of God, our whole family of God is all cheering us on and rooting for us. Verse 35, Romans chapter 8. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Nobody. If we trust in the word, if we have faith in God, patient in hope, rejoicing in tribulation, instant in prayer, 
seeking first the kingdom of God, who shall separate us from the love of Christ? No one. No weapon formed against us shall prosper. Ain't nothing going to come between me and my God. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Nothing. The only thing that can allow anything to come between you and, and the love of Christ is yourself. Allowing things to come into your life. Opening yourself up to things that don't belong to be there. Allowing sin to grab root in your life. It's okay to think things that you shouldn't think. Everybody does that. But as soon as you think it, recognize it. Woo, almost knocked my coffee over. And rebuke it in the name of Jesus. Cast it out. That's not of God. I don't need to be thinking thoughts like that. Change the channel. Put it down. Walk away. Don't allow this sin. Don't allow these things that are not of God. This fear. It says, for him who knows to do right and does wrong, it is sin. Don't allow these things to get a stronghold in your life. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? No one. Shall tribulation? Nope. Or distress? Nope. Or persecution? Not today. Or famine? Nope. Or nakedness? Nope. It ain't going to happen. Or peril? Or sword? I'll die for my Jesus. I'm carrying my cross with me. Pick up your cross and follow Jesus. I got my cross right here. You don't like it? Throw me up there and kill me. Because I ain't going to back down from the word of God. As it is written, for thy sake, we are killed all the day long. That's just what I was saying. From, for thy sake, we are killed all the day long. We're to pick up our cross and follow Jesus. For thy sake, we are killed all the day long. We die daily for what we believe in. That's how much faith we have in our God. As it is written, for thy sake we are killed all the day long. We are accounted as sheep for the slaughter. Nay, no, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. Praise God, praise God, praise God, man. In all these things, no matter what, no matter tribulation, no matter distress, no matter persecution, no matter famine, no matter nakedness, no matter peril, no matter sword, I die all the day long for my God. Why? Because he first loved us. We love him because he first loved us. He sent his one, his, his one and only begotten son and sacrificed him to show us how much he loves us. I'm not going to turn my back on my God because he'll never turn his back on me or you. In all these things, in all this famine, in all this nakedness, in all this peril, no matter if by sword, no matter if by gun, no matter if by fear, no matter if by worry, in all these things, we are more than conquerors. We can overcome all things. We can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. Don't give up. Don't lose faith. Don't quit trusting God Almighty that he loves you and he has a plan for you, for your life, that he has a purpose and a reason for everything. In all these things, we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. It's not easy. Imagine being Lewis and Clark wandering off into the wilderness across America, exploring, trying to set up whatever was to come behind them. It's scary, but we are more than conquerors. Fear is not of the Lord. Rebuke it in the name of Jesus. We are more than conquerors through him, Jesus, that loved us. We love him because he first loved us. We're following Jesus. He's the way, the truth, and the light, folks. For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature whoo, shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen. Man, nothing, ain't nothing going to come between me and my Jesus. Ain't nothing going to come between us and our God. I love you guys all so much, man. Man, this, I hope this just touches your heart in some way, some shape, some form. I'm going to flip on over to 1 Timothy, 2 Timothy real quick. Um, I, I want to read something. It says 1 Timothy 3, 16. 
All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. This ain't got nothing to do with me. It's only got to do with God and his Holy Spirit and using me. And I just say, God, I'm here for you. Help me to do your work. It touches my soul so much to hear the things that I'm saying. So, I mean, if it touches my soul... I hope it touches at least one person out there. God bless you all. I hope you guys have a beautiful, wonderful week. I'm going to go ahead and end in prayer. Father God, we come to you this beautiful day with this fresh, clean air and this sun shining. And I just thank you for all good things which come from above, God. I thank you for your word that you've given to us to help encourage us through tribulation, through times of difficulty, to reassure us that in all things we are conquerors, that we can overcome all things through Christ who strengthens us. I thank you, Jesus, for sending your son to that cross to be an example of the love to, that you have for us, to be an example of how we should live our lives and how we should be willing to sacrifice ourselves for the greater good of, 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 of our family. I ask that you remove all doubt all fear, all discouragement, remove all, all worry, God, and help us to grow closer to you. Help us to be stronger in our faith with you. Guide us in all that we do and keep us wrapped in your arms with loving reassurance. I thank you so much, God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.